beautiful day here uh, in New York and excited to answer some questions. Oh yeah, it's it's starting to get hot over here. I think it's uh, touching 90 plus now, which is a far cry from the hill that I'd experienced three weeks ago. But yeah, yeah, uh, hope is you know simmering uh, up a bit over there, getting some nice sun, and uh, you're enjoying it a bit more. Well, it definitely snowed a good amount yesterday, but uh, we're we're back in business today. We got some sun. We're uh, we're feeling great. Uh, so without further ado, let's just hop right into some questions, Usman. Let's do it. All right, Jasper Ten. They ask, "What are the plans for the Series One base moments minted, and those packed? Will they be dropped, released, gifted, promo, burned, etc.?" We have finalized our plan. Uh, we are excited to roll it out. We're not quite ready to roll it out, um, but we're excited about this plan, and uh, we appreciate the question. But we will have an update here. Uh, sometime in April. Um, so I don't know if that's next week. I don't know if that's in a few weeks, but the plan is finalized, which uh, was an undertaking, and now we're in, in better shape. Awesome. Thanks for clearing that up. I know I've received a few questions on that myself, so I'm sure it's very exciting for the community to hear about as a um, possibility in the future. All right. Brendan asks about marketplace bots they thank us for getting rid of them in the past week um but they're also asking if there's any plan to change the system or get rid of marketplace snipers flippers um they're stating that maybe 99.99 percent of collectors can't compete with these uh, super speedy checkout times and that they have to buy these moments after they'd already raised the price yeah we're continuously looking into this uh we as uh, the question mentioned, we have taken nice steps in the past week. And now that we have a process in place, we'll continue to improve there. Um, but more holistically, I think we're really excited about some some policies that we're making uh, that similar to the Series 1 base uh, moments that we're not quite ready to reveal what the plan is. Uh, we're in a similar territory where the, the past week we've made some really nice headway and some nice progress on kind of developing those policies out and kind of the contingency of, okay, this person is identified as uh, a multi-accounter or a bot uh, based on their, their transaction speed or whatever. How can we go about kind of penalizing them uh, in a way that's kind of responsible? Great. Baller Basket asks, what are some of the factors that the team still needs to tackle about before turning the marketing machines back on, so to speak? Yeah, I mean, I think first and foremost is withdrawals, right? Uh, like, we know that that's a huge pain point in the community, and we're still kind of catching up there. Um, long term, we're definitely in a position to to market, and we're not shying away if someone comes to us, Mike Conley, for example, and his team came to us about this challenge reward idea. We were really excited about that. Um, so we're we're going to continue to do things like that. Um, but as for kind of a holistic marketing engine, I think we're we're a little bit away. Um, with that being said, we are adding a new uh, SVP uh, from the NFL who will be joining the Dapper Labs team next week, and David Feldman. And we're really excited to have him on our team, um, kind of guiding our our vision and marketing strategy long term so uh slowly but surely we'll get closer to kind of having that that market ship that or that that jet fuel launch the rocket ship but for right now uh we're kind of taking care of all that we can with the, the current backlog um because as you know we had three hundred thousand collectors join us in very short order and we want to make sure that we can do our best to uh to Give them a positive experience. Yeah, very excited about that hire. Um, I mean, coming from the NFL, I'm, I'm sure Katie, who also works uh, at the NFL, uh, will have a lot to geek out about. Um, so, you know, we're, we're getting those big guns. You know, w once marketing hits, once we're in a stable place, uh, there's no shortage to what we can potentially do. Uh, but in the meantime, we are still very, very... Uh, zoned in on taking care of all our existing collectors and all the issues that have been servicing over the, the past few months. So 
that's just um, the book of what we're doing right now. I am Groot asks, when will the Damien Lillard reward be released? So that should potentially be released shortly. Uh, apologize for the wait. There was an update to challenges, a blog released about that. Uh, Jacob, do you want to maybe discuss more about that and why sometimes these challenges are delayed? Yeah, I, I think the the Lillard should be released today. Um, not not worried about that timeline. Uh, as you all know, we did have an exciting challenge reward distribution yesterday with Conley. Um, so the Lillard kind of took a back seat, but that will be distributed out shortly. Uh, appreciate your patience. Uh, the moments that you, you had, um, if you had them at the time of the timer expiring, you, you can move those moments without fear. Uh, but but the Lillard moment will be distributed today at some point. Such a sweet moment as well. Uh, my personal favorite player, once again, not telling you to go buy Damian Lillard because of what I just said. He's just my favorite player. Not financial advice. Um, and hopefully this can uh, rest calmly for referees to answer. So yeah, that, that will be uh, distributed today from what we're hearing. Bossley asks, or says, I got another idea. How about at the end of the season, we have a top play series where the top 10 assists, top 10 dunks, top 10 shots or moments? So that'd be a great suggestion for our ideas forum um, that we have. And let me go ahead and link that for you. But you all have some really, really creative ideas. I, I go around and I browse this suggestions forum quite a bit and i'm just kind of taken aback by the amount of awesome feedback you all present and share this to the team so uh thank you this is the right link to go to in the office hours channel if you have um some some neat ideas like those but feel free to pitch them thank you so much all right ogs oh, update on gifting uh, so we just released a blog that says we expect to have gifting back on by April 9th, if I'm not mistaken, Jacob. That's correct. Uh, we anticipate April 9th as our deadline to bring it back. It will come back with some really great uh, restrictions that I think most of our collectors that have been collecting uh, for a while are not going to have any qualms about but will definitely inhibit multi-accounters um, and it will make it harder to gift. And, and we've looked at the data really extensively here. We think that this will negative, negatively impact uh, very, very, very few genuine collectors on the platform um, as most new collectors don't really come to Topshot for gifting if they're genuine about collecting. Uh, but the, these, restrictions will have a big impact uh, curtail uh, off market kind of trading in a way that is nefarious such as gifting a moment and then selling it back for thousands of dollars we've seen those instances all the time and i want to be really clear to the community here if it hasn't been explicitly clear before in our code of conduct uh, we explicitly say that buying and selling Dapper credits off market is against our terms of service. Um, it's illegal. And if the fact that it's illegal wasn't enough for everyone here, know that if you are doing off market kind of buying and selling or off market gifting in a way that is suspicious, and by that I mean very clearly, I am gifting this moment and then buying it back for thousands of dollars or something in that in that vein. That is going to raise eyebrows and make your withdrawal process significantly longer. So uh, for the collectors that have not been doing that, overwhelmingly so, the withdrawal processing time is 21 days or less. For the collectors that have been doing shady off-market stuff, and I'm not talking about gifting away moments for giveaways. I'm not talking about... Uh, gifting a moment to a friend who's getting started. I'm talking very specifically about kind of using gifting as a mechanism to uh, buy or sell dapper credits off market. That is stuff that is going to delay your withdrawal process. So 
um, for anyone that is at 21 plus days of their their withdrawal being processed, uh, I would ask for you all to kind of take a look in the mirror and ask yourselves, did I do any of that? And if so, that will just that will kind of explain why it's taking a long time for you. Now, I, I, I don't want to get into a specific case by case instance with any of you because every unique instance will be different. Um, but my recommendation is if anyone from our team reaches out about suspicious off market transactions, be as honest as um, you can, because that will be the fastest way to resolution trying to hide anything trying to be defiant or, or uh, shield will be um, unhelpful and make the process that much harder for us to, to get to the resolution. Yes, don't sell debit credits, don't buy debit credits from someone, um, just, you know, stay safe around here, uh, follow the protocols, you know, withdrawals are a process, yes, but we have just bolstered the team that is able to handle these requests, and we just ask you to be patient, please. Um, we have been rapidly expanding. I can't speak to the exact numbers that we've increased our team by, but it has been very, very exponential. Um, so, you know, we're, we're well positioned to handle these requests in the future and it's just a matter of, you know, getting everyone trained up to speed, but, um, you know, just give us time and just maintain that safety and, and don't do exactly what we advise against and something that's just straight up not allowed. Yeah. And we certainly have a backlog of people still from January and February that, um, have been, uh, strong members of our community and good collectors. Um, so we will get to all of those requests in due time. Uh, bear with us. We appreciate your patience. We apologize that in our UI, we gave unrealistic timelines. Uh, those timelines are getting updated regularly and uh, we are making progress here. And uh, yeah, just thank you again for bearing with us as we are kind of scaling the team to handle the demand that uh, we did not have until very recently. Awesome. Whoa, wait, what asks, has there been any update on timeline for potential rare or legendary pack drop? Or perhaps is there any new thoughts on how these gatekeeping requirements will look like? Maybe, uh, for example, Jacob, we had those three moment requirements for past drops. Um, do you think anything will surface for these new rare and legendary drops in the future? Yes, yeah, so I, I I have on pretty good authority that sometime in April um, could be as soon as uh, mid April, we will have a, another legendary drop, uh, which I'm really excited about. I think for our collectors, there should be a, a tacit understanding that this will not be a kind of free for all, and we will kind of roll out restrictions to being able to. Uh, enter the legendary drop queue um, and we're constantly thinking of ways that we can reward genuine collectors in the community on that front when it comes to the very next one we're not in a position to share what those details are nor um, if we if we had those details fully finalized would we be wanting to share it prematurely um, the whole reason why we hold off on announcing it is to ensure that at the time that we fully settle on the idea, we're rewarding the collectors that to that point had been um, doing you know, proper collecting. What we don't want to see happen is we put out a mandate of collectors need to have X number of moments in their, in their accounts to be eligible for this drop. And all of a sudden we see the market just go through a kind of bonanza that artificially raises the floor to prices that are no longer accessible to new collectors. Um, and we kind of saw that last time around. So we're going to be really responsible, really uh, thoughtful about what this next kind of requirement looks like. Rest assured, if you are a genuine collector, um, you're going to be in pretty decent shape. Um, but there is going to be kind of, this won't be open to anyone. You're going to have to have proven a proven track record of being a strong collector on top shot um, rather than, and and I know that the kind of the most strong criticism is going to be this is a rich get richer type uh, system. Um, and we don't look at it that way at all. 
Um, we do know that there are going to be really strong collectors that have access here. Um, but we also look at it as a way to ensure that there are no extractors from Top Shot. That is, people creating accounts strictly to get into one of these and then flip their pack on the secondary market and just cash out. We're, we're doing our uh, we're doing a lot of diligence there to ensure that extractors no longer abuse Top Shot, especially around legendary drops. Yeah, we do a lot. You know, we we put a lot of care and thought into these decisions. I'd imagine other collectible companies, you know, they they don't take as many measures as we do to prevent things uh, like botting or take into consideration people's account values, you know, just in the essence of, hey, you know, do what, we, what you will and uh, we'll be kind of hands off. But, um, you know, we, we care about the community. We, we take all these suggestions to heart and we really just want to continue improving because, um, you know, we, we do care and we do take everything to heart once again and we want everyone to be happy. So just know that we're there, we're listening and, uh, you know, we are doing our best to provide a great experience for you all. So on that topic, Captain Revel talks about collectors who had maybe gotten burned doing challenges, uh, maybe spending more than they expected and not getting uh, the return that they expected, perhaps even for these challenges, challenge rewards. But is there a way to incentivize people to do these challenges with that in mind, with maybe their moments decreasing in value um, or, you know, just going in and not having the outcome that they expected based on market yeah. value. Yeah, I appreciate the question. question. A few thoughts here. Number one is, I think in particular, we saw this a lot with the seeing stars moment that just uh, obviously just wrapped up with Kevin Durant. Um, on that front, Kevin Durant is injured right now. And I think that going into that challenge, it may have been a little more accessible to complete because Kevin Durant was injured. And when Kevin Durant comes back healthy, I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, those moments changing. And this is not uh, financial advice. This is not collector strategy advice. This is just objectively looking at the numbers and seeing that Kevin Durant has not played a game in X number of months and knowing how that impacts perception. Uh, number two, we will uh, continue to figure out ways to make challenge rewards stand out. So be it an icon or an indicator on the moment to reaffirm, yes, this was the challenge reward. Or um, in the Mike Conley case yesterday, maybe on a very rare occasion, working with the challenge reward player to uh, get that uh, moment to be even more special. Now, to be super clear, that should not be the expectation going forward. It is very hard to work with uh, elite players. And Mike was a, a very good sport and he, and his team came to us about the opportunity. We thought it was a great chance to kind of reward our collectors who are taking a leap of faith, especially in the circus of um, FUD going around about challenges being worth it or not. Now, long-term, I think that there has to be a uh, better understanding from our community that just because a moment was involved in a previous challenge does not mean that moment won't reappear in a future challenge. So what we're seeing all the time is a challenge expires and the moments needed for that challenge then tank in price. And I think that it, it makes sense because to date there hasn't been a super concentrated effort around recycling former uh, required challenge moments in future challenges. But we will start seeing that more often regularly. Um, so collectors should not have this mindset that just because a moment has been used in a previous challenge, all of a sudden, no chance it's ever going to be used again. Because that's just not going to be the case. And the last, the last thing I want is for a collector to, to come to me or yell at me because they flipped a moment thinking that it wouldn't be used in a challenge again when that was that's explicitly not the case um so I, I would appreciate for you all to circulate that to other collectors in the community that just because a moment has been used in a previous challenge does not mean that it can't be used again and in fact uh you should go into every challenge every upcoming challenge with the understanding that there's nothing off nothing nothing preventing us from recycling a moment 
Right. I mean, just for instance, we had those master challenges where you'd use the got game moments to get a rookie debut, uh, Matisse Dibel, uh reward in the past, and then the cool cast master challenge for LaMelo Ball uh, moment in his rookie year. So uh, that's just the potential of it. And I imagine there is room to expand on that as well. But yeah, don't, don't count out reusing moments uh, that have been used in prior challenges for future ones. And of course, there is utility alongside each of your moments beyond this in uh, potential, I mean, sorry, in, in the hardcore game coming out in the future where you can plug in your moments and play. I uh, don't have many details beyond that, but um, there are utility, there is utility for your collection. All right. Razor's Edge 052 asks, Will there be more Sing Stars Series Two challenges in the future? Um, there won't be any more Sing Stars challenges, but as I was just saying, moments from the Sing Star set can certainly be reused in upcoming challenges. Um, so I guess that's kind of the the easy e easiest way to put it without getting too specific. But yes, you you shall. You should expect to see any moment, not just seeing stars moments in future challenges. Um, but yeah, we, we definitely are cognizant that collectors are uh, aggrieved about seeing stars, um, especially having it happen so closely tied to the all-star game rare set. Um, and we are thinking through strategies there about uh, making the seeing stars moment more relevant long term. Um, with all of that being said, I think that the seeing stars moments are really epic, um, and you know, especially for a bunch of these guys that are first time all stars or um, you know an all star with a new team, for example. Those moments to me uh, feel really special long term because it commemorates their all star them getting nominated to the all-star game and obviously the all-star game uh set is the moments from the all-star game itself but they, they have a little bit of a different narrative to them i think for collectors great janet from it asks will there be a cool down period after buying a moment before you can sell it again as potentially with gifting maybe you uh, get gifted a moment well there is that cooldown with gifting already if i'm not mistaken um but a cooldown period after purchasing a moment and maybe someone had the intuition to potentially flip it no i think that that is that is more than acceptable as far as a collector behavior on top shot if you see a moment that you think is undervalued uh, i don't I mean, I don't want to speak for the team because I don't think we've had ample discussions here and, and it's possible that long term we change our, our stance. But for me, I, I see value in collectors scouring the marketplace, finding an undervalued moment only to relist it immediately in the hopes that it is uh, a, a nice play by them. Right. Um, I don't think of that as bad collector behavior. I think of that as good collector strategy. Um, so I think the gifting restrictions will be in place. Uh, to ensure that there's no kind of suspicious kind of off market uh, activity and and to be very 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 clear with everyone here i don't want to be dogmatic we don't want to be dogmatic if you do off market transactions we can't help you if it goes awry but you can do it what we are dogmatic about is stuff that explicitly breaks the law so you know, to put a word for it, laundering. And that is what I'm referring to as our biggest concern. And and honestly, one of the biggest pain points in a lot of collectors' ability to withdraw is is this notion of kind of illegal activity happening off market. If you want to sell a moment that, you know, is uh, the market value of that moment is competitive with what you're selling it off market for, as long as you don't kind of come to us complaining that you know you got scammed do it i would recommend you do it only with friends and people you really trust but i don't like that that's part of kind of true ownership of top shot you can do with your moment as you wish outside of the context of clearly abusing the platform to ruin the collector experience for other collectors and breaking the law 
Yep. And, you know, just to kind of reiterate on previous points from a long time ago, we have the NBA as an IP. We need to protect not only them, ourselves, but all future IPs that uh, we host through host on our blockchain and create their Dapper Labs. Uh, we need to do this right. And, you know, the reason why these processes take so long is because, you know, people may potentially abuse the system. We can't just allow people to do this at free will. Otherwise, you know, Top Shot wouldn't exist. And, you know, uh, there'd be a lot of backlash on that end. So uh, just want to keep that in mind and um, put that out there. But without further ado, I want to go back to speaking about incentivizing collecting because we did touch upon um, using a challenge moment potentially for another challenge and one that's already been used, but also the hardcore game. Jacob, do we have additional utility to incentivize collectors to hold their moments um, and, you know, actually be true collectors and relish in the plays that they collect? Yeah, I mean, I think we were touching on it a little bit before Usman, and I'm a little cautious about revealing too much because I think the plans are still kind of ongoing and, and the discussion is very uh, lively, but... Certainly, we want to reward our collectors with access to uh, the, pre the, the best pack drops, right? So uh, having strong collections will help you get access to those drops. And, um, you know, for legendary drops in particular, there might be a high bar um, where you have to have a really nice collection or have done something that only real collectors will have done to have eligibility. And I don't want to get too far into the details there. So I'll be vague. Um, but yeah, I think like that is, I would almost look at it almost like a video game, right? Where you are playing the video game and in order to unlock higher levels, you need to complete uh, basic levels. And for Top Shot, I kind of see that as a potential avenue for us to go down uh, with with really great pack drops long term, such as legendaries, where uh, collectors need to kind of prove themselves as collectors on a more kind of elementary level before they can get access to this. Exactly. Sorry for the crude analogy, but that's kind of how I, I would frame it to any collectors here that are kind of envisioning what that could potentially look like long term. I love it. By the way, I'll, um, the Damian Lillard Challenge Award did drop. So uh, if you're here and you're not checking your collection, you did complete that challenge, go take a look. Feel free to share your award uh, on talking moments on that channel, on social, wherever. Um, congrats on completing it and getting such a sweet moment. All right. Brennan does speak about the Mike Conley reward, and we already touched upon uh, the insights on how this worked, I believe. And if we didn't, you know, um, I apologize. But they're asking about the hints of innovations we, look, we can look forward to. And could we potentially expect things like in this, this in the future to be announced? or continued as a surprise to the community? In the future, I mean, we're talking about generations to come, right? So uh, I, I certainly think that in the short term, they'll continue to be surprises. Um, and then long term, maybe we can do entire sets where every single moment from the set has a, a narration. Um, I don't know what timeline looks there like there. I don't, I don't think yeah, it's going to be this season. Think. That's fair. Um, so they're also speaking about badges for these narrated, narrated moments. I know, you know, people do toy around with the idea of badges for several different things, MVP, Rookie of the Year, uh, all, All-Star. Uh, so would narration kind of be in that pool of, hey, that's, that's potentially a thing that we can look at down the line, maybe not necessarily right now, but um, yeah, I mean, could be the potential of Top Shot. It could be. I mean, I would say that for our collectors, I don't want to conflate these two different ideas. We can tag moments so that if you go to the marketplace, you can search for all moments with narration. That seems like a, a pretty quick win. Uh, I do think that adding badges will be very meticulous and uh, conservative about which badges we add. Uh, so in this context, 
I think it's more likely we'll see. Uh, and, and to be clear, do not aggregate this as kind of a final decision because this is the first time I'm hearing the question. And obviously, we only started the narration yesterday. But I, I think that it's safer to anticipate that narrated moments will get a tag for easier searchability in the marketplace than a badge that distinguishes it as a narrated moment. Great. Um, Darth 9000 asks a pretty hard hitting question. What is the history and role of the largest accounts, the Whale Vault, NBA Top Shot, Roham and Steve? So I can speak for Whale Vault and Steve. Uh, pretty sure they both joined day one. Um, they were early beta collectors. Steve is a referee. Um, so he helped kind of a uh, QA test for us and uh, as did the entire beta community early on and as you all do right now. But this was in the initial closed beta phase back in uh, June and July, August and so on to help shape the product to how it became um, to what it is now through all their amazing feedback and suggestions. But, you know, just they, they really love the product. They love collecting and uh i'm not sure what the question is beyond that but that's what they do same thing as uh whale vault uh that's i believe a vault comprised of amazing moments i'm not sure if it's an investment tool collecting whatnot but you know they they have the right to um do whatever they wish with their moments there whatever you know um uh, investment tool they'd like to create out of those uh, NBA Top Shot is our account, so you may see some of those limited Series 1 base moments, for instance, that we have plans for future distribution. Uh, do we want to potentially touch on Roham at all and his account? Yeah, I just shared in Office Hours a link. Uh, Darren Robel from the Action Network specifically asked Roham about this. Roham has committed publicly to, uh, he says he doesn't ever plan on selling his, his moments. Um, when you think about kind of uh, just ha in a similar instance to Whale Vault and Steve, uh, there was a time when Top Shot Dapper Labs employees were collecting on Top Shot to iterate and make more informed uh, product feedback so that our team could build the best product around. And there was a time not too long ago where legendary packs did not sell out for a few days until after the pack was dropped which is crazy to think in hindsight um but what i what i really want to emphasize here is that roham isn't hiding from it he has his name on the account it's not like he's trying to be secretive um he doesn't plan on selling and if you think about the long-term potential of flow top shots integrity is really important to it so i think uh for Roham, it makes sense that Top Shot is just the, fir the first product. He did nothing kind of egregious or nefarious to, um, to collect these moments. And long term, he doesn't plan on selling it. So um, I, I would kind of just leave it there and, and say that collectors, uh, sh collectors shouldn't worry about Roham's account um, as kind of an unfair advantage because it... A, he's not doing anything with those moments, and B, uh, he obtained all of them completely legitimately in an ecosystem where getting moments on Top Shot was far less competitive. Thanks for touching on that, Jacob. The fail plane, speaking about the blockchain, the fail plane asks, are there any plans to add transparency to where the moments have been? Basically, instead of just purchasing and sale information at the bottom, but potentially adding who opened the pack and or if it was gifted. I know some of those tools exist on evaluate mark, dot market as well. Um, but when it comes down to uh, the exact account that provide those transactions, would that be in the works? Um, I don't know if it's in the works. I, I think it has been surfaced as an idea. Uh, thir third party tools that are doing great work, like you mentioned, Evaluate Market, congrats to them. Uh, great raise this week. Um, so they, they're certainly on the right track to being an integral tool to the community long term. Uh, 
but no, I don't have any comment on that. I, I haven't had any discussions and don't want to give the community any wrong information there. All right. So Seconds Out asks, thoughts on making the full audio commentary only available to moment owners and either none or a limited portion of the audio to non-owners. I think it would create value for actual ownership and increase healthy demand for those moments. So referring to the Mike Conley, only if you own the Mike Conley moment, do you get the narration? Is that it? Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think so. Um, I think that that would be a lot of product engineering work and inevitably lead to one member of the community that owns that moment, screen recording it, putting it on YouTube, and all of a sudden it's out there, right? So uh, I think it would be a lot of work for something that uh, we obviously have a lot of other things we need to prioritize right now. But I appreciate the suggestion and the idea, and I don't disagree with the sentiment. I just think that it would be really easy to uh, to make the our intent uh, fairly worthless because the community will have those moments and do what they want with them as far as screen recording and sharing out. Yeah. Shark Fisherman one asks, is it possible to limit some of the rare pack drops to accounts that are in the top 5% value wise? This would reward people who have spent a lot of the money on the site and encourage newer users to purchase in the marketplace, therefore driving the market up. No, I think that's too explicit of a rich get richer type dynamic. Look, I think we want to incentivize collectors to being strong collectors. I think when I look at that, I don't look at account valuation as the number one indicator. I look at kind of are are the collectors active in the marketplace? Are they completing sets? Are they chasing challenge rewards? Are they doing the things that we believe make the collector experience on Top Shot really valuable and, and worthwhile. Um, I think putting too much of a direct kind of correlation between uh, collector, who's a good collector and who has a lot of money in their account valuation is dangerous and, and sends the wrong message, frankly, because I think there are a ton of excellent collectors in our community that aren't close to the top 5% in account valuation. And there are a ton of people in the top 5% of account valuation that aren't actively pursuing all of these angles as collectors that we want to encourage continuously. Great. Uh, TM3 asks, is it true there's going to be a secret prize for completing SS2? Is that seeing stars challenge two, possibly featuring LeBron? Um, so what do we want to say about people who uh, receive information that's not on the blog main site, um, et cetera. It's not public top shot info and uh, maybe coming to theories they receive from other community members. Yeah, I, I think there are a lot of words and messages I'd like to impart, but first and foremost is, and I'll, I'll kind of go into an example from last week where there was a, a rumor surfaced around Cool Cats that did not come from NBA Top Shot at all um, and got surfaced in the community and kind of in a matter of 24 hours became fact. Everyone just assumed it was happening because it got surfaced as a conspiracy. And that's really dangerous group think. Uh, do not make... Uh, I think they, this ties into a lot of collector behavior on Top Shot. Do not make assumptions. Do not... Unless you can explicitly point to it being communicated at some point, be it in office hours or in a blog or in a tweet from myself or from Roham or from the NBA Top Shot account or from Usman, do not take any kind of hearsay in the community as gospel and make decisions based on that hearsay. Um, it's really dangerous. There's a lot of money involved here. I know it. And I want collectors to be well informed. Uh, we had an instance this week where a collector went for seven challenges. They did the challenge seven times over thinking, or apparently were told by someone in the community that you can get unlimited challenge rewards, which is not the case. You can get one challenge reward per collector on the, on the site per challenge. So, you know, this is causing us headaches uh, to seeing stars two with LeBron. Um, to be very clear, 
There has been nothing said from our end to suggest that there would be anything special tied to that moment other than that it's a, a challenge reward featuring LeBron James, which is already extremely special in its own right. Um, and I would not anticipate, and it's unfair to the Dapper Labs team, frankly, for collectors in the community to recklessly speculate and then get mad at us when their speculation does not turn out to be the truth. Um, so I, I want to be super clear on all of that, that for the sake of uh, eliminating headaches internally and eliminating heartache in the community, do not run with reckless speculation unless you can get it verified by someone on the Dapper team. And if you're ever in doubt, our mods do an unbelievable job in Discord and there's always someone willing to answer questions. So can't say that they'll know definitively, but if it's news to them, you can trust that it's probably news to us at Dapper. Yep, speaking of our uh, moderators or referees, uh, shout out to El Dumbo Luke for coordinating and moderating this so well. He's about to open this Office Hours channel up, and he just did, for everyone to uh, field live questions. But we still have a couple of floaters I would like to um, ask. So the collector asks, is there any target for keeping signups open 100% of the time? Or is this just a matter of getting the support team um, that also handles withdrawals and places to support the volume of users? Um, I think that eventually the hope is to have signups on all all the time. Um, right now, as there's still kind of as we're still uh, modifying and optimizing the queue to have restrictions um, and kind of prioritizing a steady and smooth marketplace, uh, we're we're being really thoughtful about where signups falls into all of that. So, um, you know, for example. With the stress test yesterday, we turned off signups, but we left uh, the marketplace running. And I, I think that's kind of the recipe we're going to continue to see. Um, if you don't mind, I, I see a question in the chat right now that I really want to address. By all it, has, it has to do with LaMelo Ball's Rising Stars moment and his Master Challenge reward. Um, and I want to be super explicit about this. We plan to release many more rookie moments, be it from LaMelo Ball or Tyrese Halliburton or James Wiseman or Patrick Williams or Emmanuel Quickly, the, the number of moments that are currently out in the ecosystem, you do not have to go all in on. Uh, for people that are excited about the LaMelo Ball Master Challenge Award, it's not necessarily about the circulating count of that moment. Obviously, the scarcer it is, the better. Um, but Collectors should not be constantly trying to look at what has happened on Top Shot and make their own inferences. So this goes very much in line with what I just said about kind of making assumptions based on community hearsay. You're hearing it from me right now. There will be more rookie moments coming. We are anticipating having rookies be a part of upcoming premium packs as MGLE moments. We're anticipating having rookies even be a part of hollow icon drops coming up. So there will be other legendary rookies. There will be other rare rookies coming. Um, there might even be a legendary drop tied to rookies exclusively. Um, so I want to make that super clear to every collector here. We'll have more details on that shortly. Um, but when it comes to the Lamella Ball Master Challenge Award, I think two things there. The Rising Stars moment, the Rising Stars packs came out halfway through Cool Cats. So uh, by any means, if you as a collector who pursued the first two Cool Cats Challenge Awards now decide, no, actually, I don't want to uh, go for the Master Challenge because now that there's Rising Stars out there, it doesn't seem worth my time. You have you have ample time to not pursue that. Um, you certainly through the Luca um, and uh, the Jokic and the Anthony Davis, there have been really strong challenge rewards to date on that front. Um, and I, I want to emphasize to collectors that there will be more of these rookie moments coming. Um, the LaMelo Ball Master Challenge Reward happens to be a really epic LaMelo Ball moment. And as you said, uh, there because it is quite an arduous journey to getting that master challenge reward it's it's going to be tough 
Um, but I want collectors to have uh, eyes wide open about the fact that that moment will be really special long term. Uh, you know, it takes a, a really committed collector to being able to get it, but also uh, know that there will be other rookie moments coming in other rare and legendary sets coming up. Great. Um, Jeffy, they have a question about an issue where maybe two real users that don't have multi accounts team up to complete challenges. Is that okay? Yeah, as you know, gifting right now is disabled. We anticipate gifting will be back uh, a week from now at the latest. Uh, so we're excited about that, but um, probably closer to a week from now than this weekend to be super clear on that. And what I would say is uh, long term, if you can complete a challenge together with the new and improved restrictions on gifting, by all means, go for it. But those restrictions are going to require that both of these community members are active collectors in order to have the eligibility to be able to gift. So, um, yeah, take that as you will. Awesome. Zavner, hi. They ask, the first 300 moments minted by Top Shot right after the auction sets, Genesis and Platinum Ice, are serials 1 in 30 of 10 early adopters. NBA Top Shot is currently holding 268 out of 30. So are there specific plans to release these? I know that you know we released some of these serials for showcase contests in the past. Is that something that can happen potentially down the line? Um, I know we've used these for promotional purposes, such as those, not promotional, but contests for the community back then, uh, maybe back in December, January. Uh, will we see something like that in the near future? I'm sorry, Usman, can you repeat that? Yeah, yeah. So basically the question is, do we plan on releasing some of these older moments via giveaways, promotions anytime soon, such as um, low serials of early adopter moments still being held by the NBA Top Shot account? Uh, yeah, I think in due time, uh, I don't have a specific timeline on it. I think it's safe to anticipate that it will happen. Um, we've done those already with showcase contests in the past. I wouldn't be surprised if we do that again. Um, but as I kind of mentioned, we, we've got a lot of big priorities and that one is, uh, doesn't feel as make or break for top shot success, but yes, for sure. Those moments will eventually be distributed out to collectors that complete certain, uh, activities on top shot, such as a showcase contest or other ideas that we're working on. So I've seen this touched on a couple of times. I'm not sure the comfort level, uh, what kind of response we have, but how do we feel about regions that aren't currently on top shot that are yet available? Such, uh, such as yeah, China. I don't have a timeline there. What I will say for the collectors that uh, have tried to get in in Ukraine or China and have kind of lied about or either used a VPN to bypass gating, um, it's creating a big headache for everyone involved. Because if you're in the Ukraine or, or China and you're using a VPN that explicitly says you're not in Ukraine or China, you're able to get onto Topshop, but you're not going to be able to withdraw. Um, and that, that's not a Dapper Labs thing. That's a your country thing. And, and uh, that puts us in a tough spot because we're pretty explicit about that. Like if you log, if you tried to get into Topshop, uh, in Ukraine or China without using a VPN, you wouldn't be able to. So the onus is, has to be on the collector at a certain point of using kind of a way to bypass that. And we're not going to be able to help you with your withdrawals um, until we are able to function in those countries. And um, we're excited about uh, international expansion, certainly in a lot of countries already. And we hope to continue to uh, come to more countries in the not too distant future. Um, but for collectors, uh, we don't have an update there. Uh, but my advice would be if Top Shot is not available in your country, please do not try to use a VPN to get around that and play on Top Shot because it's only going to lead to headache long term. Absolutely. K Dub asks, what about adding in game audio for moments? So that's potentially on our radar in the future. Uh, it's not something we can really expand upon but it is something that we looked into. Um, I agree. It'd be super cool. I think many people 
float around Chuck Breen or commentators uh, just talking about these exciting plays in action, maybe, you know, commentary that you hear from players on court. So, um, you know, it's something that I know the community will love, but just know that it's something that's potentially on our radar in the future and nothing that we can really discuss. Uh, Adamed0507 asks, can rewards be distributed in packs rather than just showing up in the collection? I know that's been heavily suggested in uh, the NBA Top Shot feature suggestion forum. Uh, do you think that's a possibility, Jacob? For challenge rewards to come in packs rather than show up in the account? Yeah, and maybe with some uh, common moments alongside them, I've seen that uh, suggested quite a few times as well. Yeah, I don't know about the common moments angle to it. I do know long term we're looking into more exciting ways for distributing uh, challenge rewards and kind of doing a one moment pack is certainly uh, a popular idea in the community and something that we internally agree could be really cool. Um. Again, one of those other things that doesn't feel make or break for Top Shot success, but something we'll look at um, and definitely give uh, a lot of consideration to long term. Great. I know this is a support question, but wondering if you have insight. DN asks, besides sending a follow-up ticket and being patient, is there anything someone can do for a 40-plus day old missing dapper deposit ticket or any support ticket in general? Uh, filling out the form especially the new form where you can kind of select your issue will be the fastest way. Um, everyone in the community knows we're, we're still working through that backlog. We've made some really nice strides. We've done some really great hiring. Um, we really apologize. 40 plus days without a response is not acceptable to our standards and it won't be the case long term. Uh, from my understanding, Many collectors are going to be hearing from us uh, shortly if they've been sitting for as long as they have. Uh, specifically, in instances like yours, uh, I, I would say please be patient, but rest assured that we will more than make up for uh, any inconveniences you've had. We'll, we'll handle your, your case with proper attention and make sure that uh, any missing funds are uh, put into your account. If, if it turns out to be the case that it was a legitimate kind of uh, bug or, or technical error. Great. Thank you, Jacob, for the reassurance. Uh, D unit asks, has Top Shot actually banned any bots from the marketplace? Have they blocked accounts? Yes, we have. Um, I can't get into the specifics about who, but in the past week or so, uh, we're looking at quite a lot like maybe maybe 30 to 40 different accounts that we've uh kind of stopped from being able to continue to abuse the marketplace yeah um cordy you're speaking about withdrawals submitted with a 13 day response jacob did express earlier that uh people that don't have any flags on their accounts can expect their withdrawals to uh, disperse into their accounts at the 21 day mark um, or, you know, within 21 days and anything longer could be a potential flag on your account that uh, they would have to continue manually reviewing and sorting that out. So uh, just ask you to be patient and really appreciate that. Thank you so much. So Les Grossman asks, so when I buy a moment, do I own the rights? Can I then use my moments in YouTube videos? No, you own the collectible. You do not own the highlight. Um, similar with trading cards, you do not own the rights to the image. Uh, you own the physical card. Um, so that that's an FAQ we get, um, and I hope that that adds some clarity. You do not own the rights to the highlight. All right. So Loftus on Discord. Are are you officially a Discord? Uh... Team member? Jacob, how can you assure smaller collectors that don't have as much capital to invest that legendary pack drops will still be accessible for them? I believe this might have been touched on earlier, so I apologize if that's a resurfaced question that you've already touched on. But yeah, can I guess you, they're speaking about uh, moment requirements uh, for legendary packs for people who do have $1,000 and do want to get that great moment, but maybe don't have much of a collection to start with. 
Yeah. Um, I would I would say to collectors that are coming in new, hoping to get in on the challenge reward, the best thing you can do right now, my best advice is start collecting moments. Uh, and this isn't a haphazard, you need X random moments in your account in order to be eligible. I think it's going to be more sophisticated than that. Um, and to be explicitly clear, we're we're still working through what that looks like, but um, lots of different ideas about how we can kind of distinguish someone as a, a real collector on Top Shot based on a multitude of things. And uh, again, I'll, I'll cite the analogy I've heard internally, which is kind of comparing it to a video game, where when you start out a video game, you have to complete basic levels in order to get access to more kind of advanced levels. And if we look at legendary drops certainly as uh, a, a very advanced level of collector and, and there's certainly a lot of winning to be done if you do get a legendary pack um so and, and by that i mean you just have it's it's really exciting right people love collecting legendary moments because they're legendary to collect and so uh when i when i look at um future legendary kind of drops i look at it as a way for us to incentivize our collectors to continue collecting in earnest around really cool things like completing sets, completing challenges, doing showcases, uh, pursuing different types of events in the community, um, because doing all those things will up your chances to getting access to one of these legendary drops. Great. Michael Whittle 3 asks, is it possible for us to see the daily new signups? Or would that would there be that possibility down the line? Just like a new friends feature in Discord, for example. Yeah, is the question to uh, is the question to identify which collectors are new, or is it to see how many signups we get a day? Um, yeah, something like that, or maybe like a stream, uh, a stream of new collectors, like the activity feed, um, or the collectors feed on Top Shot. Yeah, I would say submit the idea to ideas.nbatopshot.com. And if it's uh, something that uh, other collectors are also interested in, uh, we will uh, we will certainly give it consideration. All right. We only have a few minutes left, so uh, just want to kind of rapid fire maybe last few questions, or if you feel one's really valid, then... We can go into extent on that one. Bell Cow Bass back asks every player in the NBA should have a moment. Do you think this will ever happen? Sorry, can you repeat it? Yeah. So Bell Cow back asks every player in the NBA should have a moment. Do you believe this will ever happen for every current player in the NBA? Um. Yeah, we're we're certainly that's our goal. Um, we want every player to have a moment for sure. Awesome. Um, any plans for upcoming showcase contests? So we did touch up on that. Could be down the line. Um, I know how successful they were in the past. Everyone enjoyed them. We enjoyed them. Um, some really, really unique ones. So was really stoked on seeing them all voted on and shared across social. Will collectors be able to stake their moments in the future for some more utility? I, I know that's a pretty common ask in uh, the crypto community. So I'm not sure if the potential is there. Would that be more of a, a suggestion for the ideas form or something that you're sure of is a possibility or isn't a possibility? Um, yeah, I, uh, we, we've heard that suggestion, as Usman said. I don't think we're making like substantial progress on that. Great. Uh, any plans for limit buy and sell orders and trading on the site? um sorry no, i i don't i don't think so um if i understand the question i i don't i think like cooldowns serve a purpose of keeping the marketplace uh steady i don't think needless kind of restricting is in our cards it, it doesn't seem like collectors would want that at large scales and it doesn't seem like it makes sense great um, I'm going to see if I can field maybe one more question and I don't want to keep you too long, but I always appreciate you doing this every week, Jacob. 
We saw a post regarding running back moments coming in the spring. I understand you can't speak specifically to the time frame, but it was originally scheduled for this spring. Is that still accurate, Jacob? Uh, sorry, it was my, I'm trying to reply to some people in the office hours <laughs> thread. Can you can you repeat that again? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, no worries. So um, there's a collector who may have heard something about a run it back pack coming in the spring, and they're wondering if that target is still on track to come this spring or maybe push further. Yeah, it, it, it got pushed. Um, we're now looking um, at run it backs in general as kind of a big off season uh, movement. We certainly have quite a lot of stuff on the docket for the in-season stuff uh, still. Uh, so we're excited about that. Um, but for run it back, especially the one that we were anticipating initially to be in March, um, I think you can safely anticipate that that won't be coming anytime too soon. Okay. And that that's the one to be explicit with Shaq and Tracy McGrady and Allen Iverson. Um, we still are excited about that, but with the season kind of in full swing and, and content schedule already kind of planned out, uh, I think it's much more likely that you'll see that all coming in the off season. Awesome. Um, Jacob, I don't know your bandwidth right now. Um, if you know, this is a wrap by all means, feel free to tell me, but if you have uh, time to answer another question, I'd be happy to uh, pass this one on as well. Yes, I got one more question. Well, let's do two more. We got one more top shot and then one NBA general question. Um, and so if you are, Uzman's already got the top shot question already kind of picked out and identified. So if you are a collector, post in office hours any NBA general question you want answered in the next five minutes or so. Oh, yeah. And Jacob is so excellent answering those being the absolute marvel he is NBA knowledge. So Tampa Bay 12, <laughs> that name, will there be parallel sets, inserts, one of ones, et cetera, in the future of Top Shot? We do know about the potential of one of ones, but inserts and packs and different things like trading cards have um, in Top Shot to kind of reflect them with different, you know, um, just a variety, more of a variety beyond what we currently have. Yeah. Um, so there's kind of out of the Fortnite days, there's, there are new laws in place around loot boxes, which basically tells us that we can't put a rare moment in a base set pack. We couldn't put a legendary moment in a base set pack. We couldn't put, you know, and we couldn't put a legendary moment in a rare pack, yada, yada, yada. We are looking actively into ways that we can make base set packs feel other than pulling a rookie and hitting the jackpot that way. Um, we are looking into ways that we can make uh, big winners in base set packs. Um, one idea that, you know, if we are able to do it would be really cool and we're still trying to figure out if it would be doable is like having certain moments with lower edition sizes, similar to what we're already doing with like Top Shot debut moments or rookie, uh, three-star rookies that have 4,000 in the base set packs. But things in that vein could be kind of the equivalent of inserts. Um, but certainly we're, we're, we need to prioritize being compliant. All right. So I'm going to try to see if I can find a great question about the NBA. And if you see one yourself, hey, feel free to, to feel that. But uh, if I don't see one soon, then I will go and fill one myself. But we do see one. And I believe we already discussed this in NBA hours uh, before. But Backyard Burger asks, who is the top of Jacob's Rookie of the Year ladder? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think... Until he got hurt, Lamella Ball was the the answer. Um, as you all know, I'm partial to Tyrese Halliburton. Uh, love him being a part of our community, and and genuinely think that he's just going to be a stud. Sees the court incredibly well. Really smart on defense. Shoots the ball extremely well. I kind of liken him to Sean Livingston with a great three point shot, which would have been like a multi time All Star for sure. With that being said. I did just watch the Knicks 
Wolves game this week, and Anthony Edwards in the fourth quarter looked like a total superstar. And, uh, you know, I, I'm a Michigan State basketball fan for college, and I saw Anthony Edwards at Georgia dominate Michigan State in the Maui Invitational last year, and I thought he was going to be a surefire number one overall pick, runaway superstar. And then as the season progressed, my my confidence in that waned, and I actually wasn't super high on him coming into the draft. But I, I still think I would give the nod to Halliburton if the season ended today. But from what I've seen with Anthony Edwards over the past month, um, he's certainly gaining on him, and it's going to be a two-person race at that point. Um, and yeah, I, I see some people asking about Emmanuel quickly. We just got to get him more playing time is the, the reality. Now that Alfred Payton's getting some fourth quarter run, it's hard to get quickly in the court. But uh, quickly, it's been really great. Um, and then last but not least, I see a, a LeBron or Jordan conversation, just so everyone in the community knows where I stand on that. I think if you're trying to win the most games in a season, so you're starting a team from scratch and you want to win uh, 74 games, set a new record, uh, I think LeBron is the better bet um, for a season, a regular season. He helps your team win more games. With that being said, if it's a game seven and I need to win game seven, I think Jordan has a little edge there, a very slight edge, just as kind of you never have to worry about crunch time, Jordan getting off a shot and, and you know, not being afraid to take a shot and miss it. So it's really close. They're both elite in their prime of primes. I think LeBron is probably just a, a morsel ahead. Um, but Jordan is still the goat um, in my eyes. I think that LeBron will, um, by the end of his career, have the mantle as long as he continues to break records. And, uh, you know, the Lakers winning another championship would certainly help his case. Oh, yeah. And those debates, they'll, they'll never end. And there's definitely more in the conversation as well. So it's pretty sub- subjective. Also, people who grew up in those eras Uh, may have a different opinion to those watching LeBron today. Um, So it'll it'll be an internal debate, and it's always fun to to hear different viewpoints and uh, talk about how, you know, maybe uh, players played back in the day to how they they are now and uh, different talking points on that. So uh, once again, Jacob, thank you so much for uh, feeling these uh, questions during office hours so gracefully um, every Friday with me. And, you know, maybe we uh, look forward to having a rotating panel of co-hosts. We know our amazing co-community manager, Candy, um, was a host alongside Jacob last week. So looking forward to more of that in the future. Uh, Thank you, community, for tuning in as always. Appreciate you all. Give it up for Jacob time and time again, uh, being the MVP of this community and addressing all the questions you have. Um, no matter how hard hitting they are. So we truly appreciate you and hope you have a fantastic weekend.